So, um, so again let us continue with our discussion on algebraic geometry. So, you know um, uh, let me recall the uh, the setup in which we are uh, working k, k is an algebraically closed field. For example, you can think of k to be complex numbers if that is convenient for you uh, and then the, the whole idea is you look at kn uh, with the Zariski topology on the one side which is called as uh, affine n space over k okay and uh, and this is the rather uh, this is the geometric side and then on the other side you have the 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 commutative algebraic side and that is supposed to be the the ring of functions on that space and in this case of course is the ring of polynomial functions on that space uh, so it is actually k of x1 through xn so x1 through xn are n indeterminates they are n variables and uh, if you you think of this ring as a ring of functions on a fine space because you give any polynomial you take any polynomial then you can think of it as a map from a fine space to uh, uh, a n to a 1 which is just uh, a 1 is just k okay. So, these are functions with values in k okay and therefore this is the ring of polynomial functions they are functions on the space okay. So, so the geometric side has got to do with the affine space the 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 commutative algebraic side has got to do with the functions see it is a supposed to be uh, uh, a statement of Felix Klein who said that you know the geometry of a space is supposed to be controlled by the functions on the that you allow on the space and this is so geometry actually kind of uh, uh, comes into play when you have a space and you and you define what the functions on your space are going is going are going to be okay. So, in this case the space is affine space and the functions are the polynomial functions okay and uh, I told you that uh, so of course uh, the uh, just to re recall what we have seen so far you know uh, the the given any uh, subset s here uh, you associate to uh, the to s the the common zero locus of s <coughs> which is uh, the set of all points in affine space uh, which uh, at which every uh, polynomial in s vanishes okay and uh, and then there is also uh, uh, there is also a map that goes in this direction uh, given a subset t of a fine space then you associate to t um, which is an ideal in the polynomial ring and this ideal of t is just all those functions which uh, vanish at every point of uh, t okay and um, uh, then this uh, this correspondence uh, goes on the one side uh, uh, the, the 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 objects that are that are important here are the sub -ob sub objects which correspond to ideals and the objects that are important here are the so called algebraic sets which are the closed sets which has zero sets of this form okay and of course you should remember that if I changed uh, or if I replaced s with the ideal generated by s you will still get the same 0 set okay. Um, so basically what you get is uh, you get uh, on this side if you take the set of radical ideals uh, then you get a bijection with the set of all closed subsets. And and this bijection is a uh, uh, it's an inclusion reversing 
correspondence that which is uh, quite obvious to see because the larger the ideal is uh, the the common zeros of all the functions in the ideal will grow smaller okay and uh, the uh, the other important thing is uh, that so if you look at radical ideals you get closed subsets on the other hand if you look at maximal ideals then under so uh, uh, you should remember so maybe I think uh, let me write this below let me leave some space in between uh, so there are maximal ideals so the maximal ideals are also they are also uh, uh, radical ideals because actually uh, you should perhaps check as an exercise probably you have already done it in competitive a course in competitive algebra or algebra that uh, if an ideal is uh, prime then it is already radical and since a maximal ideal is prime a maximal ideal is also radical but of course there are radical ideals which are not even prime okay. But in any case maximal ideals the, the collection of maximal ideals is a subset of this okay and this under this bijective correspondence goes to the smallest possible closed subsets which are actually the points. Uh, of course when I say points uh, I am I am thinking uh, of a point here as a singleton subset of a n okay. So uh, in other words uh, you, you can actually uh, write a n here and of course the, the notation for this is uh, the maximal spectrum of uh, the ring of functions. So max max spec uh, of a of a ring, competitive ring with one means the collection the set of all maximal ideals in the competitive ring. So what you must understand is a point here is a maximal ideal of the ring. Okay, and the fact is that uh, given a maximal ideal, you get a point and conversely. Okay, so uh, so so in particular, for example, if you take a a maximal ideal of the the maximal ideal. Will always uh, will always look in this form. Uh, it will be generated by uh, x i minus lambda i for a tuple for of a for an n tuple lambda one etc. Lambda n, uh, which will be a point of a n, and this is the correspondence because zero set of this is this, and the ideal of this will be that. Okay, so you should remember that in this direction the uh, the map is taking the ideal it is the i map and uh, in this direction the map is the z map which which uh, takes uh, which associates the zero set the common zero locus okay and in fact i told you that uh, uh, this is uh, that this is this is uh, this is uh, this also uses the null strand sets uh, in a in a in a way it is an avatar of the null sets uh, uh, probably weaker or stronger uh, probably weaker but uh, let us look at that in the exercises but the point is this is a non-trivial statement okay the what is trivial is if you give me an ideal like this it is that it is maximal is is, is reasonably trivial to check but to conversely say that every maximal ideal is of this form uh, which is true only when k is algebraically closed uh, 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 or at least when k is algebraically closed uh, that is not trivial okay and that uses uh, Hilbert's null strand sets. Uh, so, so the, the, the what lies in between are the prime ideals the prime ideals uh, uh, the collection of prime ideals they correspond to what is called the spectrum of the competitive ring and uh, you see the spectrum of the competitive ring is supposed to be the uh, set of all of its prime ideals and therefore you think of a prime ideal here as a point in the spectrum. So a point here is a maximal ideal 
and a point here is a prime ideal okay and of course this is contained uh, as I told you uh, prime ideals are radical maximum ideals are prime okay and what happens is uh, that okay. so what corresponds to prime ideals uh, on this side are what are called as uh, affine uh, uh, varieties uh, in a n uh, so uh, so by this I mean the so the so the definition is these are all uh, algebraic uh, these are all algebraic sets these are all closed sets which are irreducible okay so prime ideals correspond to irreducible subsets which are closed okay and that is the theorem I uh, stated in the previous lecture and I just stopped with that because uh, uh, the last lecture actually stopped with the definition of what an affine variety is okay an affine variety is an irreducible closed subset of uh, affine space okay and uh, and why are they important they are important because uh, uh, we will see later that any variety I mean uh, uh, that any closed subset can be broken down into a finite union of affine varieties and the decomposition is unique if you make sure that there are no redundancies that is no uh, affine variety in this is contained in no affine variety in the decomposition is contained in some other affine variety in the decomposition. So every closed subset can be broken down into a finitely many affine varieties only in a unique way essentially unique way I say essentially because you can always uh, you will have you can always permute the uh, uh, the pieces in the union but that should not affect the union or the decomposition and uh, so that is one important thing about affine varieties the because they are like building blocks of algebraic sets every algebraic set is broken down into union of affine varieties and uh, this is uh, this this is very very important because uh, later on uh, for example uh, I told you probably in the first lecture that there is a more advanced uh, 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 or I should say sophisticated language of algebraic geometry which involves what are called as schemes and uh, schemes are uh, uh, some spaces with functions okay with rings of functions and uh, in fact uh, the what you have is not just rings of functions you have sheaves of rings which means that you have rings of functions on on every open subset of the space so it is a it is data not only with the space with a ring of functions on the whole space but it also comes with for every open set in the space you will have uh, a ring of functions so you are uh, this whole data is called a uh, 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 sheaf of rings and a scheme is something to uh, like that which consists of a space and a sheaf of rings okay where the sheaf is a collection of uh, rings for every open set uh, in the space but the important point is the technical point is this a scheme is supposed to be locally modeled in this way it is supposed to be made of affine pieces so the so for all of algebraic geometry no matter how general algebraic geometry you do these affine pieces these are the building blocks these are the building blocks and that is the reason why these have to be first studied so you should understand that affine varieties are important because they are, they are the building blocks even in the most sophisticated form of the theory okay and uh, uh, the other the other important thing is uh, that uh, the other important thing is of course that these sets are topologically irreducible okay and you know irreducibility I have told you is a very strong form of connectivity so uh, uh, they will have nice properties with respect to maps so for example in topology you learn that the image of a connected set under a continuous map is again connected okay so if you have a topological space and you have a map a continuous map from the topological space into another topological space then the image of a connected set if in the source topological space will be 
a subset of the target topological space which will be connected okay and the same thing will happen for uh, for irreducible subsets okay. Uh, so irreducibility is a very nice thing uh, to 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 have on a subset okay. So now let me let me try to uh, prove this part so let me recall uh, definition so this this I am just recalling uh, a, a topological space a subset y of a topological space so I am I am just abbreviating topological space to top sp uh, x is called irreducible if y cannot be written as y1 union y2 with y1 y2 non empty proper closed subsets okay. If a topological space, space can be written as y1 union y2 where y1 and y2 uh, are non empty proper closed subsets then we say that the topological space is reducible and uh, the definition of irreducible is that it should not be reducible okay and uh, what happens in the case of varieties as we will see or what happens in the case of algebraic sets here namely closed subsets of affine space you will see that you will get it you you will you will be able to break it down into not just a union of two you will be able to break it down into union of finitely many uh, uh, subsets which are each uh, which are themselves irreducible and they will be called the irreducible components okay but uh, and that will be called the uh, reducible decomposition of your given closed set okay so that is where we are heading to fine. So the of course uh, this definition as I told you uh, implies that uh, if y is uh, irreducible then it is connected okay because uh, connected is a uh, uh, for it to be connected. Uh, for it to be connected you should not be able to write it as a disjoint union of proper closed subsets non empty closed subsets okay and that is certainly not possible if you cannot even write it as a union of of non empty proper closed subsets okay. So uh, irreducibility is a very strong form of connectedness I told you that irreducibility has not lots of nice properties uh, one thing that comes is that uh, if uh, space is irreducible then uh, if a subset is irreducible then its closure is also irreducible so its irreducibility is not going to uh, be affected if you add the boundary which is what you do when you uh, take the closure of a set and this is also true for connectedness if a set is connected then its closure is also connected and then uh, but the other more important thing is that uh, you see uh, the more important thing about an irreducible space is that every open every non empty open subset is dense and is itself irreducible that is another very important property okay uh, which I hope uh, you would have tried as an exercise otherwise you should try it it is a pretty easy exercise. So what it tells you is that if you take an uh, if you take an irreducible space uh, and take a non empty subset then uh, you can test on that subset all those properties. Uh, which will be preserved when you take a closure okay that that subset will uh, because the closure of that subset will be the whole space and that is so you can test on any non empty open subset and any non empty open subset will be dense and that also tells you that if you take any two non empty open subsets they will intersect okay they cannot be disjoint from each other. So so these are the nice properties of irreducibility and later on it will come uh, we will see we will we will again look at it uh, probably it is not so hard you can even check it uh, off hand I think 
that uh, the image of an irreducible set continues to be reducible under a continuous map okay uh, which is the same kind of statement that you get for a connected set okay now uh, now I go to this theorem which I stated last time so the theorem is the following uh, if I in the polynomial ring in n variables over k is a uh, <coughs> is an ideal then z of i the 0 set of i the namely the points in <coughs> a n which are uh, common zeros of all the polynomials in i is is irreducible this is a subset of this topological space you see this uh, this 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 topological space is just k n uh, given the is a risky topology okay. So uh, you since it is a subset of a topological space this definition applies and you can put the condition that this subset is irreducible and the theorem says that this is irreducible if and only if uh, uh, the radical of i is a prime idea. So, uh, so what this means is that if I already started with the radical ideal I mean if I already started with the prime ideal if I already started with the prime ideal then z of i will be irreducible and conversely if I already started with the radical ideal then saying z of i is irreducible is the same as saying that the ideal itself is prime okay and that is essentially what gives you this uh, uh, this correspondence uh, in uh, in the middle okay that the fine sub the affine varieties in an they correspond to uh, prime ideals okay. So uh, well um, so the proof proof is uh, 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 quite straight forward so let us do let us do both ways uh, so let us begin with let us let us assume a radical of i is prime suppose radical of i is prime. Uh, what do I have to prove? I have to prove z of i is irreducible to show z of i is irreducible okay but actually you see uh, z of i is the same as z of rad i okay this is something that I uh, told you last time two ideals j1 and j2 have the same uh, set of common zeros if and only if the radical of j1 is equal to the radical of j2 so it is the uh, since i and rad i have the same radical namely which is rad i they both have the same zero set okay and but even otherwise this is quite trivial to see directly okay uh, because rad i mind you uh, is defined to be all those all those polynomials some positive integral power of which lies in i so it is like <coughs> taking the radical of an ideal is, is like expanding that ideal to include uh, nth roots of its members positive nth roots of its members okay <coughs> that is nth roots for positive n right and uh, so so anyway uh, so how do I check a set is irreducible so the, the logic is I have to check that it is not reducible. I have to check that it is not reducible so I have to check that if it can be written in this form with y1 and y2 as closed subsets and if I assume that y1 and y2 are both non empty and also that y1 and y2 are both proper that should not happen that is what I have to check. So what I will do is I will assume that it can be written as in this form with y1 and y2 non empty but I will assume that I will assume further that y1 is <coughs> proper closed subset and I will try to prove that y2 is not proper namely that y2 is everything if I do that then I am done okay. So that proves that it is not reducible in other words that it is irreducible so what I will do is uh, suppose uh, that uh, z of i is y1 union y2 
where uh, y1 y2 are non empty closed uh, so uh, closed subsets so here i have to go back to the definition and stress on something which i haven't written there with y1 comma y2 non empty proper closed subsets mind you of y okay that's something that i hadn't written uh, but i did say that uh, in my last lecture so let me let me stress it when i say what do you so i told you y is just a subset of a topological space what is the meaning of saying that a subset of y is closed in y that that you have a closed subset of y this is the language of induced topology a subset of y is said to be closed subset of y if it is gotten by intersecting y with a closed subset of the ambient space the larger space x in which y sits okay so when i write z of i is y1 union y2 where y1 y2 are non empty closed subsets of z of i what you must understand is that since z of i is already closed in x it follows that y1 y2 are not just closed subset of z subsets of z of i but they are actually closed subset of x subsets of x itself because a closed subset of a closed subset will continue to be a closed subset okay see in other words if when i say y1 is a closed subset of z of i it means y1 is z of i intersected with a closed subset of x okay but then you see uh, z of i itself is closed in x and so if i intersect with another closed subset of x the intersection of finitely many closed subsets is again a closed subset for in the topology because it kind of the axiom of topology for axioms for a topology if you take the axioms for closed sets tells you that you take finite any any finite number of closed sets and you take the intersection the result is again a closed set in the whole space so what this tells you is that uh, y1 which is supposed to be the intersection of z of i with a closed subset of x is itself a closed subset of x so uh, so let me let me stress that uh, suppose z of i is y1 union y2 where y1 y2 are non empty closed subsets of z of i uh 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 with uh with y1 uh a proper subset of z of i of course i'll then try to prove that y2 is equal to z of i that in other words that y2 is not proper okay then uh note that uh y1 y2 are closed in in the in the larger space x which is actually in our case an because by definition as i just told you y1 has to be z of i intersection with a closed subset of an but z of i is already closed in an and the intersection of two closed subsets of a topological space is again a closed subset so so the reason is since z of i is already closed it's already closed in a by definition because you know that's how the uh, zariski topology was defined the zariski topology was defined just by uh, taking for the closed sets uh, subsets of the form z of uh, i okay so uh, so but what does that mean uh, saying that y1 y2 are closed in a a n means that y1 and y2 are the zero sets of some ideals okay so so this implies so uh y1 is z of i1 uh y2 is z of i2 for uh for i1 i2 ideals in k x1 etc etc okay this is what you get but then but then what is uh now now y1 union so so if you take z of rad i which is z of i which is y1 union y2 is actually uh z of uh i1 union z of i2 okay 
and you know but this is the same as that of i1 i2 this is the same as that of i1 i2 because this is something that we uh, this is how we proved that uh, uh, sets of the form z of i uh, they form a topology uh, by declaring such sets as, as, as such subsets as uh, closed subsets in fact what we proved is if you took if you took z of s1 union z of s2 union etc up to z of sm where si's are subsets not even ideals then the union is just z of the product s1 times s2 times etc sm we proved that okay so this is z of i1 i2 okay and you see it is at this point that uh, uh, you know I will use uh, uh, so I will now use the uh, the null seven sets okay so what will happen is you see uh, apply i if you apply i the null cell insights tells you that uh, uh, since i of z of j is rad j okay mind you this is this this is a statement that involves the null cell insights and that is valid for any ideal j actually i of z of j uh, uh, always contains rad j that is very easy to see the non trivial thing is to say that i of z of j is contained in rad j namely it is a statement that if f if a polynomial is in i of z of j namely if a polynomial vanishes on z of j then some power of the polynomial is in j you cannot have a polynomial some power of which is not in j, j to vanish on uh, all the zeros of j that cannot happen okay. So, uh, so this is this statement uses in seven sides and if I apply this on both sides what I will get is I will get radical of rad i is equal to radical of i1 i2 okay I just want to say that this contains i1 i2 okay this is the way I have to go okay. So uh, you see radical of an ideal always contains the ideal okay because the radical is supposed to be all those elements some positive power of which is in the ideal and the first positive power of any every element of the ideal is in the ideal. So the ideal itself is contained in its radical always and see the fact is that this is rad i okay because taking rad more than once is not going to change anything and uh, and this is prime this is prime so what you are getting is you are getting a prime ideal contains a product of ideals now you see we, we use this following fact from competitive algebra it is a very simple fact that if a prime ideal contains uh, a finite product of ideals then it has to contain at least one of them okay so 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 here is a lemma a very simple lemma from competitive algebra if uh, a prime ideal <coughs> contains uh, a finite product of ideals then it has to contain at least one of those ideals one of the ideals in the product of course you know uh, of course all this is uh, val uh, the state in this statement the background I am assuming is that you are working in a commutative ring with one and you are having finitely many ideals and if you have finitely many ideals j1 j2 through jm then their product is j1 dot j2 dot etc jm which consists of just finite sums of products of m tuples uh, taken from the Cartesian product of all the j's okay and if a prime ideal contains uh, the product j1 j2 jm then it has to contain some j i and this is just uh, this is very easy to see because it is just definition of prime ideal that if a prime ideal contains a product then it has to contain one of the finite product then it has to contain uh, one of the factors of the product it is just a uh, restatement of that if you if you try to work it out. So, so what this this lemma will tell you is that rad i has to contain i1 or rad i has to contain i2 but then this uh, now you apply z okay 
you apply z and to take the zero locus and remember that when you apply z the uh, 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 the the inclusion is reversed so what you will get is z of rad of i z of rad i is contained in z of uh, i1 or z of rad of i is contained in z of uh, i2 this is what you will get and mind you z but z of rad of i is mind you is the same as z of i and z of i1 is y1 and z of rad of i again is z of i here and this is uh, y2. So what you are saying is z of i is contained in y1 or z of i is contained in y2 okay but what we have already start what we started with was that y1 and y2 are contained in z of i. So what this means is that either z of i is equal to y1 or z of i is equal to y2 but then you are assuming that z of i is not equal to y1 so what, what this will tell you is that z of i has to be equal to y2 and that tells you that uh, you cannot reduce z of i and okay so so let me write that down this implies that uh, uh, z of i is equal to y1 or z of i is equal to y2 which implies that z of i is equal to y2 since z of i is supposed to properly contain uh, uh, proper subset of uh, uh, sorry supposed to properly contain uh, y1 okay and this implies that z of i is reduced. So we have started with uh, rad i prime okay and we are able to reduce that z of i is irreducible. Now we will do the other way uh, we will assume z of i is irreducible and show that rad i is prime okay. So conversely assume that uh, uh, z of i is irreducible. assume that z of i is reducible uh, we will show show rad i is prime okay. So, so how do you so this is again uh, uh, this is again translation you just have to check the condition for a prime ideal you have to take a product how do you check a something is a prime ideal. Uh, how do you check an ideal is a prime ideal you take a product of two elements of the ring uh, as belonging to the prime ideal and, and demonstrate that one of the two uh, factors of the product is in that ideal okay. And uh, so what we will do is so let uh, f times g belong to rad i let the product be in rad i okay. Uh, so what this will tell you this will tell you that um, uh, the ideal generated by fg f into g is a subset of uh, rad i okay because if an element belongs to an ideal then the ideal generated by that element is also in that ideal because the ideal generated by an element is just simply multiples of that element by ring elements <coughs> okay. So, uh, so if I now, now uh, you apply z if you apply z I will get z of fg uh, contains z of rad i. And uh, but you know z of f g is just z of f union z of g okay. This is exactly the same statement uh, that z of i1 union z of i2 is z of i1 i2 okay. So z of f g is z of f union f z of g okay and of course when I write z of f for a single element f by that I mean z of, z of a single element f is the same as z of the subset consisting of the single element f and which is also the same as z of the ideal generated by f they are all one and the same okay. So, so what happens is that so you know uh, so now you now you can so what is what this tells you is that you see z of rad i has been written as z f intersection z of rad i union uh, 
z g intersection z of radii okay. you you see z of is f is a close z, z f this union contains this. So, you intersect this with the smaller subset you will get back the smaller subset. So, if I intersect this with z of rad i I should get z of rad i and that is and intersection you as you know uh, distributes over the union by by simple set theory okay. So, you get this, but what you must realize is that this is if I call this as y 1 and if I call this as y 2 what you will notice is that y 1 is a closed set it is a closed set because uh, it is the intersection of two closed sets. So, it is a closed set similarly y 2 is a closed set closed set and you have written uhhh uh, z of uh, uh, rad i as a union of two closed sets, but mind you z of rad i is the same as z of i, but what is the assumption on z of i is the assumption on z of i is that it is irreducible. So, the moral of the story is that either one of these is empty okay and if uh, both are non empty then one of them has to be uh, uh, then one of them has to be uh, the whole z i itself okay. So, so let us let us write that out let me write that out here since z of i equal to z of rad i is irreducible uh, we have uh, uh, and y 1 y 2 are closed we have uh, uh, we have the following possibilities. So, I want to say y 1 is non empty y 2 is non empty <coughs> okay. So, let us let us write down uh, uh, y 1 is it if y 1 is empty uh, this will tell you that uh, uh, that means you so that will imply that z of f intersection z of rad i is is empty well this intersection is supposed to be uh, z of uh, f uh, union z of the ideal generated by f union uh, rad i right this is what it is supposed to be by definition because uh, what is uh, 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 how do you how do you show that the uh, how do you show that the closed sets form a uh, 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 topology how the how do you show algebraic sets form a topology. So, what you uh, if you recall you can recall that uh, set of uh, uh, if you take intersection over alpha uh, or lambda in capital lambda some indexing set uh, of z of uh, s lambda this is just z of the ideal generated by the union of s lambdas okay. If s lambdas are uh, uh, subsets of the polynomial ring okay and you take the z s lambdas this is these are a collection of closed sets how do you show that the intersection of see uh, how do you show that the intersection of uh, an arbitrary collection of closed sets is closed it it follows from this calculation okay. So, z of f intersection z of rad i will be z of f union rad i ideal generated by f union rad i and so, so what that will what that will imply is if I apply i to both sides if you apply by i to blow both sides and use again use this uhhh use this z of i of z of j is rad j. So, what I will get is if I apply i i to both sides you will get uhhh um, radical of the ideal generated by f union rad i uhhh will be if I apply uh, i to the null set okay then I will get the whole ring okay because what is i of uh, a subset it is all those polynomials which vanish on the subset okay i of a subset uh, of affine space is all those 
polynomials in the in the polynomial ring which vanish on that subset. But if that subset is empty there is nothing to test every polynomial will satisfy this condition therefore i f null set will be just uh, just the whole uh, whole polynomial ring okay. And and you know if if this happens I mean I, I essentially have to show that uh, if this happens I am done otherwise I have to proceed further okay. So, so, so what does this mean this means that this means that uh, uh, f uh, the ideal generated by f union uh, rad i is itself the polynomial ring. See so this is again a fact I am using that you know if, if an, an ideal uh, if the radical of an ideal uh, contains a unit then the ideal itself contains a unit because uh, saying that the radical of saying that the radical of an ideal contains a unit say 1 tells you that there is some power of this which is equal to 1 there is some power of this the ideal generated by this union which is equal to 1 but then uh, that uh, if the some power of an element is equal to 1 then that element itself is a unit okay that means that uh, the ideal generated by this itself is the whole whole polynomial ring okay and what this will tell you is that uh, uh, so you know there is some uh, so so what this will tell you is the following that uh, so there exists uh, g1 etc gm in rad i such that uh, uh, sigma f g plus uh, f g plus uh, sigma over i uh, i equal to 1 to m f i g i is 1 this is what it tells you okay. I mean an element in the ideal generated by the union like this will will look like this you will have to pick uh, you actually you have to pick finitely many elements from the subset and then uh, uh, take ring linear combinations of that and such a ring linear combination is, is, is equal to 1 because 1 is there on the right side and now what I want to say is that from this uh, we will have to say that uh, so you know if this happens that is if y1 is empty it should more or less follow that if y1 is say that again yes if y1 is empty yes rad i is equal to z of g intersection z of rad i z of uh, left hand side is equal to the remaining thing on uh, z of oh rad i see. is y2 z of oh i see you will just get z of rad i is equal to z of i g intersection z of rad i and then you will get therefore uh, so uh, you get z of rad i contained in z of g okay so if you apply i, I on both sides you will get, get uh, you will get g belongs to rad i right you will get g belongs to rad i okay 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 so probably so so this is not this is not this is not required you are right okay so so let me get rid of this good let me get back to the easier part of the argument but i would strongly encourage you to think about that whatever i wrote down okay so um, and uh, the fact is that that also uh, will lead to something okay that will also lead to what you want but you it's you have to so the point is you have to keep translating back <coughs> uh, to the geometric side if you are on the geometric side you should translate to the ideal side if you are on the ideal side you should trans translate to the geometric side by applying uh, by applying uh, uh, this i and z appropriately okay so as you as one of you has right rightly pointed out what you should do what one do what one does is that if uh, uh, if uh, if y1 uh, is empty then uh, I mean uh, z of it is obvious that z of rad i is just z of g uh, intersection z of rad i and uh, uh, so which means that uh, z of rad i is uh, contained in z of g right and uh, because the right side is contained in z of g and now you apply i you will get uh, i of z of rad i which is just 
uh, rad of rad i which is rad i uh, containing uh, i of z of g will be just radical of the ideal generated by g okay and to which uh, g belongs okay. So uh, if y1 is empty you get g is in rad i okay alright. So, so you assume y1 is not empty okay if if y2 similarly if y2 is uh, empty then you will get f in rad i which mind you f times g is in rad i so you have to prove either f is in rad i or you have to prove g is in rad i okay and y1 equal to empty directly gives you g is in rad i uh, similarly y2 is empty uh, implies f is in rad i okay and you are done. So assume both are not true okay so 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 assume uh, both uh, both y1 and y2 are non empty okay so you you will have to thrash out all the possibilities okay suppose suppose uh, suppose y1 uh, is uh, proper then uh, irreducibility of your right z of rad i implies that uh, if this is proper then that cannot be proper if y1 is proper then y2 cannot be proper so y2 has to be everything okay and in that case you see g belongs to rad i right so so you are done essentially so let me write that down suppose y1 is proper then irreducibility of z of rad i implies that uh, z of rad i is y2 okay and this implies that uh, uh, again the same argument literally z of rad i is equal to z of g intersection z of rad i and and this will imply that uh, g uh, I guess g this will imply g is in rad i okay. So if y1 is proper you will get g is in rad i similarly if uh, uh, y2 is proper okay uh, you will get f is in rad i okay similarly y2 proper will imply f is in rad i and that, that completes the proof. So, uh, so it is very clear that uh, uh, an ideal here is prime if and only if the uh, the radical of an ideal here is prime if and only if uh, the corresponding 0 locus here is irreducible okay that proves it okay. So I will stop here and then we will uh, we will continue in the next part with some uh, with some examples okay.